probably funny, eh? Yeah. All right, morning everyone. We're gonna get started. We're gonna kick off our strategy, operations, and finance bead, Michael. <laughs> We're gonna kick off our strategy, operations, and finance meeting of the 9th of February. Hui te komiti rautaki whakahaere me te ahumone. So now we have a te reo Māori name also for our SOF committee. Um, no my hari mai to our councillors, our community board members, our mana whenua partners, Katie Mihi, and to staff supporting us through our agenda today, thank you. Uh, and also to DEM Services for all of their unwavering support as we find our way through our hui today. Um, so could I please pass over to Councillor Warwick for our council blessing. Kia ora koutou. Ia mato e whiriwhiri ana i nga taki ki mua i o mātou aro aro, i pono ana mātou ka kaha tonu. He te whakapau, mahara, hau pai mō ngā pāpori, i mahi nei mātou. Me kaha hoki, mātou ka toa. Kia whai hua, kia tōtika a tō mātou mahi a mātimaia. Ki tērā whakamau me te hehiri ki te ā. Te arahi e roto e te kotahitanga me te aroha. Kia ora, Councillor Warwick, and I expect other councillors to start practising and thinking about whether they'd be comfortable also doing the council blessing in Te Reo Māori because, yeah, a bit of a challenge for this trainium, I think, for all of us. Um, apologies. We've got apologies today from Councillor Kofit. Are there any other apologies? I'd just like to note as well, we have two representatives from the Ōtaki Community Board at the table today and both welcome to um, to be at the table and, and yeah, to, to sit in for sure. Um, and I will also have to just duck out briefly at 12 p.m. if we end up going that long, so I'll pass the chair over to Councillor Co. Did you have? Uh, oh, who's got them? Oh, Shelley. Yep, there we go, Liz. <laughs> just to read a council blessing. Can I make a request, please, that somehow uh, somebody makes a recording of the blessing? that we can listen to and, pr and practice. I Great think idea. That would be really valuable. Uh, if we, and then, you know, because I'm quite happy to to do it, but I just need some instruction on how to, yep. how to do it. Yeah, yeah in Te Reo Māori. Yeah, yeah, Reo yeah. Reo. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll take that on board for sure. Great <laughs> idea. Between. Yeah, <laughs> we did, we did to a degree. Yes, thank you, Councillor Coe. That's an awesome idea. We'll make sure that that happens either through our iwi partnerships team or yeah, around the table. Um, cool, so item number four, declarations of interest relating to items on the agenda. Haven't been made aware of any, and I'm not seeing any any lights on. Oh, uh, we, we do have a it? DLC item. I'm wondering if Councillor Wilson would declare an interest on the DLC submission as DLC chair. Yeah, yeah cool, so that's... Okay, cool, cool. So noted that Councillor Wilson has, has declared his interest in that specific item on the agenda. Councillor Pravanov. So just the point of order, isn't it up to the councillor to decide whether or not there is a conflict of interest rather than someone else suggesting that that is actually the case? No, I'm actually, uh, yeah, normally, but I'm quite thrilled. Oh, could you put your microphone on, please, Councillor Wilson? Normally that's the case, but I'm quite thrilled that uh, Janet's done that because my iPad has died of gruesome <laughs> death and I don't, have the yeah. order, <laughs> I don't have the order paper in front of me, so... Um, yes, thank you. And I don't think she was making that declaration on your behalf by any means, just a suggestion, and the Councillor yeah. Wilson was happy to accept that, yeah. so that's great, thank you. Hmm? Oh, that's getting sorted. Getting right. sorted, okay, yeah. cool. Uh, awesome, so no other declarations of interest. Item number five, public speaking time for items relating to the agenda. I'm not aware that we have any public speakers. Nope. Uh, members business, any leaves of absence? Councillor Wilson, your microphone's on, I'm guessing you, no? Cool, okay, no leaves of absence, and just as a note as well, you can always email the Mayor, um, or yeah, myself, and the chairs of other committees if you do need to take leave. Matters of an urgent nature, 
haven't been made aware of any of those and we have no updates. So moving right along to the report section of our agenda. Um, first up, item 8.1, appointment of council representative to the economic development, Kotahitanga board, Anna. I think you're up. Oh, Steffi's gonna do it, awesome. Thanks, Steffi, welcome to the table. Um, kia ora koutou. I'm actually just going to take the report as read and I will answer any questions if you have any. Thank you, Steffi. Nice and quick. Do we have any questions from the table? <laughs> Councillor Pravanov. I uh, thank you. Um, through um, the chair, I'm just wondering whether this is a paid a position for the elected member. So this is a appointment as a councillor to a board, so it is paid as part of their councillor salary that is set by the remuneration authority. So it's not additionally paid, no. Okay. Thank you. So I have a further question. So, um, you know, I, I fully endorse um, the, the skills and the qualifications that Councillor Coe has in relation to this um, being um, nominated to this position. I'm just wondering how um, they, how it's going to be managed when this comes, the report, six monthly reports come to the Strategy um, Ops and Finance Committee uh, when they're sitting around the table as well as the th three, we, e, three EB representatives on that same committee. Mm. <coughs> I'll see if, yeah, Steffi, you have any? Um... I, can I actually defer that to either Chris or Darren? I'm happy to um, to respond. Um, the terms of reference for the Econo Economic Development Kotahi Tanga Board require them to report directly back to um, Council, um, uh, if that was the question you were asking. I actually thought in the paper it said it was a strategy, ops and finance paper that they, they report back to. Um, uh, if I got that wrong. Uh, no, they will report back here, yeah, yeah. Um, but they also will report back up to council. So, um, and I'm probably getting into a bit of detail here, but there's a couple of reviews that are in the terms of reference that will come back through here and then up to council. So, um, uh, as would be usual here, uh, EWE are part of the discussion and have um, voting rights, but it will go through to council for subsequent decision. So when it comes to this, um, this, this council, this, this committee, will this be a um, report for noting or will it be to vote it on? I suppose the question is, so you have a person who is actually, I'm not sure whether um, Councillor Co, for example, has voting rights or whether they're actually influencing what goes into the paper, but then then if they, if we voted, if we vote on that paper, mm. is she able to vote on that paper when it comes to this um, this committee? Um, she's basically marking... Had two goes. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And that's EWE in the same situation, potentially. Um, my understanding is that um, Councillor Coe, um, if appointed to the EDKB, would represent um, strategy ops and finance uh, at that forum. Uh, she, without voting rights. Yeah, without voting rights. So she she would be able to to have oversight of, of what's happening at that committee. So a connection back in here, or board, sorry, a connection back in here rather than directing or or voting on the information that comes back to you here. So that means that she has non-speaking rights at, the, at, at those um, on that board. Because she will she will have speaking rights. So that's influencing. Mm and then making it, then voting on it later on in the piece, is what I'm getting at. I think... Um, is this something we can maybe take offline yeah. as to how that process works? I just yes, think, yeah, because yes. we're kind of, we are getting into quite a bit of detail and continuing down yeah. the same line of questioning. I can think we, you understand. What I we, understand completely yes. the question yes. and the, the sentiment behind it. So yeah, well, um, okay. I think today we're just looking to again formalise yes. who that person okay. is and then the, the mechanics of that. Um, okay. Yeah. Are you happy with that, Councillor Pravanov? Yeah. Thank you. Cool, thank you. Uh, Councillor Halliday. Yes, through you, Madam Chair. Um, 
Uh, first, I just wanted to, um, this is more in relation to the DKB, just because it's in the paper, and it's nothing too major. It's up for renewal, um, and it's just checking that's in the program uh, for, re for bringing up to renewal. Yes, um, uh, we'll, we'll be talking about the Ford agenda here, but it definitely is uh, on the program. Lovely. Um, and uh, I just one thing I wanted to note in regards to when we do the renewal, um, the appointment on page um, 13 of the agenda, um, we talked the appointment of independent members will be led by a selection panel. Um, and uh, we've got three people, three on there, but um, just something for consideration when we do that upgrade, will be put a fourth person on there potentially, which would be our, our, our representative on that committee um, as such. Other than that, thank you very much. Cool, thanks, Councillor Halliday. Councillor Cooper. Uh, yeah, uh, just through the chair, and it may well be appropriate. <coughs> My question is answered in, in that review. Just as to on page, page 10, the purpose, uh, establish an uh, independent EDKB board supported by Coverty Coast District Council, but then uh, the purpose is to provide a unified strategic direction for economic activity for the district. So is that, just a question, is that in conflict with being independent? I'm not 100% sure that question's relevant to the recommendation that we have on the table today, but if staff would like to still provide a bit of context. I think in terms of the deliverables um, that respond to that, um, the Economic Development Kotahitanga Board has been involved in, the, in developing the economic development strategy, which has come through here um, to be um, endorsed and approved um, to set direction for economic development activity. They, um, uh, I, I guess, were providing independent advice around the shape and focus of that. As part of the renewal and work that will be coming through um, this year, uh, <coughs> it's proposed that they would be providing advice around the future direction for that strategy. Yeah, I just wonder if that's the right uh, wording for that, uh, if you consider the scope is around transparency and trust to the, um, the lay person who's reading that, they may see that that doesn't really look like, might be the tail wagging the dog. Um, if, if, well, through you, um, I, I feel that might be an opportunity to look at mm -hmm. through the review, yeah. um, which would include the terms of reference. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I was just highlighting it. Just yeah. Cool. Thanks for bringing sure that up. Was appropriate. Ahead of time. Thank we'll, you. We'll note that down. Yeah. We've got That's that. Oh, just just to quickly before we go to you, Councillor Halliday, Kim, you had your mic down. Was there anything of previously? Was there something you wanted to add? Oh, sorry, Councillor Halliday. Could you just push your button again? Um, not really. Um, we're going to review that in the details, but um, I agree because there needs to be clarity because when I, I am a member of EDKB and so there's always that confusion and so when I come I sit with the EDKB and I don't vote. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's definite clarity because there's definite conflict there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Kia ora, thank you. Councillor Halliday, a question yes, from just, you. Uh, just a point of clarity, Madam Chair, I was under the impression that the ED economic development strategy was actually put together before the board was put together. Um, mm. So um, the board is actually the implementer of the strategy, not the creator of the strategy. Uh, that's correct. Um, and in the terms of reference, uh, there is reference to them um, shaping the development of the future direction. So what we have now was in place them implementing, but they would have a role in shaping the next phase of work. Um, and that work is underway and will be coming to council to consider alongside those subsequent reviews that I've mentioned. Councillor Wilson. Yeah, just, um, just in confirming the recommendation here, the, um, and an observation is that uh, what's been missing uh, up till now is the expertise that's now being offered um, for free. So, um, Happy to move the recommendation if we want to. Perfect. Yeah, I don't on. see any further questions. Just doing a quick scan. No, nope, I think we're good. So, yeah, Councillor Wilson moved. Can I have a seconder? Councillor Pravanov, right of introduction. Councillor Wilson, anything you want to say? No, paper says it all. Yep, awesome. Any debate on the recommendation to appoint Councillor Coe to the EDKB? Awesome. Okay, That's all well. those... Sorry, Sorry, Madam Chair. Yeah, go for it. Um, through you, Madam Chair. Look, I just want to um, endorse Councillor Coe. 
Um, we've been involved in the EDKB, and Liz has been involved in the EDKB forever with regards to its development, so I think <laughs> we couldn't have a better person representing our community's interests uh, by the council in that space. Mm. And I'm very much looking forward to um, seeing how that's moved along, shall we say, and the areas that, um, that we consider perhaps um, haven't been addressed as much as we would like uh, are addressed as well, but very much looking forward to um, Liz's input into that space. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Councillor, oh, I'm sorry, Mayor, Mayor Janet. Yeah, I'd like to talk, talk all that. Um, and Councillor Coe also brings deep connections in the business community right across Kapiti and just a long involvement which even predates this current economic development strategy. So a huge wealth of experience and expertise. So mm. thanks for agreeing to take up the position. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Thanks, Councillor Coe. Perfect. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Cool, that's carried. Thank you, Steffi. Yeah, congratulations, Liz. <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> so next up, item 8.2, our draft submission to the resource management reforms. And we've got Angela Bell presenting to us this morning. And before we hand over to her, I'd just like to thank staff um, in relation to these various submissions from the briefing that we had on Tuesday to now having a revised revised draft submissions. Incredibly, incredibly quick and agile mahi, so it's much appreciated. Um, yeah, so handing over to Angela. Kia ora koutou. Um, yes, so uh, we are tabling a draft submission this morning um, that hopefully you guys have received th um, through your portal system, but um, there should be a version to go up on there. I'll try and have one moment. <laughs> and are there hard copies to go as well? Has everyone got a hard copy? Yeah. Cool. This morning? Yeah. Apologies, sorry. <laughs> Um, so if everyone has a hard copy, which is the one that has highlighting on and draft submission on the top. Um, so yes, yeah, sorry, we have, um, we need to get agreement to table this this morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Was there anything you wanted to kind of highlight in terms of changes or... Um, um, so, more yeah, in terms of the uh, changes that have been made since you last talked about this with us on Tuesday, um, for those of you that were there, are uh, all highlighted in the document and it's largely just the introduction of the commentary that you guys asked for um, as part of that conversation. So the rest of it is largely unchanged. So, um, yeah. Thanks. If I may add, um, so today we're seeking... Um, uh, agreement to table, um, noting that you've only received it today and we're proposing that you, if you'd like to provide uh, more feedback by Monday, um, we are happy to take that. And today, if there were any substantive um, points in the new material in this draft um, that anybody had any thoughts on that we could focus on, um, and uh, just really reminding you that um, our submission to the Environment Select Committee is the 19th of February, so um, hence why we're working at PACE. Um, and uh, we have proposed that due to that, the signing of the final submission would go through our Chief Executive and the Mayor um, before that date. So uh, I think just to note in part one, um, of the um, changes, we had focused um, uh, quite a bit of conversation around the relationship between central and local government. Uh, cost, uh, the process that's been run, um, and um, uh, leaning into the expertise of local government uh, and the implementation of how this may move forward. And that was on the back of the discussions around... Um, effectively the change in, in Prime Minister and um, some of the review that may be underway around the policy programme, that it was an opportunity for you to provide additional thoughts through this process around where some of the priorities may sit. So if I, I leave that as a starter for the conversation. 
Cool, was that all from yeah, mm-hmm. Angie and Chris? Awesome. So any questions on the paper in front of us? Councillor Wilson. Yep. Um, <coughs> thanks for this. The, um, just a note around, uh, well, it, it is a question, um, around the, the commentary that's being proposed, where we're talking about um, cost, and I agree with what's been said there 100%, but there are consequences of saying it. So where we are saying that our community, um, our communities face cost of living crisis, yada yada, um, and that our ratepayers cannot afford to foot the bill for the implementation, etc. Now I agree with that. But then if we're making a declarative statement to say the things that we want to do, that there are a substantial portion of our ratepayers who cannot afford to pay for that, and then we go, and here's your 7.5% rate increase. So that any rate increase, if you're already saying to your rate payers, you can't, we know you can't afford it now, but, but um, we're going to increase your rates as well. So there's, a, there's an issue when a council makes a declarative statement about something and then flies in the face of its own statement. So just a, a note of caution around that. Um, yes, thanks very much. And we're absolutely um, happy to take the steer from the table on whether you'd like to, um, as a collective, whether you want to leave that as it is or change that statement around. It's totally um, over to you guys about how you want to deal with those statements, I guess. I would just add that I agree 100% with the statement. I think it's important to make the statement because it's true. Um, but it just there will be some corollary impacts, that's all. Uh, through you, um, it may be um, that we add um, to the comment that reflection, um, Councillor Wilson, that we are already in a position where we're having to increase the burden in the community and it would be on top of that, that 7%. Um, and so that would be, I think, the, um, the point of the comment is it's on top of um, already um, exacerbated pressure in our community. Yeah, I definitely heard some quiet yups around the table to that, so I think, well, yeah, <laughs> cool, we've got that down, awesome. Were there any other, yep, Councillor Fravano? Oh, yes, thank you. So, um, <clears throat> I certainly I appreciate the time frames, the very tight time, time frames that staff have been under here, and um, I suppose the, you know, the quality of, of the submission and the other ones that we're going to be considering today and the opportunity that we've had to um, input into those. But I have a question in relation to standing orders. Um, basically, 9.7 and 9.8, um, are these submissions or this submission on the website for the public to view as required under our standing orders? Yeah, I'll get Angela to provide answer to that. Um, the practice that we've um, undertaken to date is that they are made available once they've been finalised on our website. So as soon as it gets signed off and sent, that it gets loaded up onto the website for the um, community to see, rather than the drafts going in beforehand. So um, previously, when we've had um, these submissions that we're looking at, they're actually included in the agenda, so that the draft is actually made available to the public to view. But this has not happened in this situation. Yeah, go Chris. Um, my uh, my um, understanding from um, previous uh, situations where we've been under tight time frames is that on occasion we have pushed a submission through the chief and executive and Mia and then tabled it back um, to either strategy ops and, and, and finance as it is now or council. Um, mm. And where possible, we would, um, as part of due diligence, of course, um, ensure that we were providing as much information um, through the usual process as possible. So um, I think part of our feedback in our submission has been to central government that they've made it very hard for us to engage our community in this process because of the shortened time frames, particularly around the Christmas period. Um, so acknowledge the point that as part of best practice, we'd love um, to always be able to to um, have things ready to go, but we've been under extreme tight um, 
uh, time constraints, essentially. Yeah, I think that's good feedback for what we'd like to happen in an ideal world, but obviously this is yeah, well, different well, circumstances. Well, I suppose in terms of standing orders, there, there probably needs to be a, um, something in there that actually allows our standing orders to, 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 to deal with these situations, which, you know, I, I agree, are, are, um, because of the constraints mm. that you have to respond, um, they're not being met. Um, Yeah, to, to Jenna. Uh, we can take that issue around standing orders um, offline. I'm not sure that we're quite sure exactly which section the councillor is referring to and whether that's relevant here. Um, maybe a point that I would make is that including um, submissions in the agenda in draft form, um, as we do whenever we have the ability to, is about facilitating good decision making for you guys. It's about ensuring that you have the information you need to make a good decision. That's the primary purpose of doing it, not to ensure that there is the opportunity for the public to comment on draft submissions. Um, but happy to take that standing orders issue offline and see whether there's any uh, improvements to our practice that we need to make for future. Thank you. Uh, so I have a further um, comment to make. So under the delegation, so I suppose under the delegations, there's no comment about um, the Climate and Environment Subcommittee who has the responsibility of reviewing all um, such submissions. And I, I, I agree, I, I acknowledge that the time constraints have not allowed that. But um, my question is, should it also not be included in that dele in this, uh, the de delegation for this um, um, draft submission as well as for the other ones that are coming that are appropriate to this committee or the um, Social Sustainability Committee to be part of the delegations? I think we're deferring to Janice. So um, I think uh, a key point to acknowledge first and foremost is that um, uh, in this early stage of the triennium there will be some um, matters of business where because things are already in train or as you've heard because of the time frames we're not necessarily going to be able to um, work completely within the delegations of the subcommittees and the committee and in instances like that there is the ability for the Mayor um, to to direct that um, that things go straight to strategy operations and finance and um, the council. I make that point as a way of highlighting that um, potentially different pieces of work will progress in slightly different ways through the committee structure based on the factors at play at the time. Thank you, Janice. I think that was really well put. Councillor Fravanov, did you have any other questions? Just brief ones. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I've just noticed that too. Oh, no, oh, no your Thank microphone me. isn't... There we go, yeah. you're on now. So, thank, thank you, Janice, for your response, but I suppose, um, do you agree that this is actually part of the delegation of um, the, sub, you know, the, the subcommittees and it's not listed? Yeah, I think just, just for clarity, in terms of the recommendations on the table today, we're looking at the specific... Submission. So I wonder if we could just keep questions to that. Janice, if you wanted to provide a brief answer, feel it free. Does say but sub submissions. It does say submissions in our responsibilities. Yeah, I'm just thinking though in terms of our recommendations today around um, tabling and, and accepting this as a draft submission. Um, that is, that's what's in front of us. But I'll pass to Janice. I know that's okay. Sorry, Jocelyn, you might, yeah. Um, 
uh, the council is correct that within the delegations of the Climate and Environment Subcommittee, there is reference to making recommendations on submissions. Um, uh, possibly I've been distracted trying to read the delegations and I'm not entirely sure exactly um, what issue the council is trying to raise in terms of that delegation not being shown. Councillor, are you suggesting that that delegation should have been noted in the report attached to the submission? That's something we can take offline to make sure that, um, that we apply that in the future if it's needed. Awesome, great to have that clarified as well. Any other questions on our draft RMA reform submission? I don't think so. Awesome. Through you, Madam Chair, I just wanted oh, to... Sorry. Um, didn't oh, sorry, didn't see your light. Uh, and I apologise, it's not really a question, it's more of a statement. I did have some questions, but um, and I appreciate this is not staff's fault, but this really highlights a problem that we've got with government going through this reform, and it would be nice to have it noted or something along that yeah, sort of line. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just been the time frame that we've been allowed to get this together. Um, I put my notes together based on the submission that was put through to us at the end of last week, which I really appreciated, which is great. Then to get another one this morning, it's just thrown me out completely. I can't reference mm -hmm. anything. And I, I appreciate that staff, that's not a staff fault as such because of the time frame's concerned. But, um, you know, th this is an underlying problem that we've been having ongoing with this um, reform. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just want to take a moment, I guess, to say then I, I really appreciate that the words that were taken on board from Tuesday, uh, Tuesday's workshop mm. around all this has been put into these submissions as well, yeah. because it just makes a dog's breakfast out trying to, um, to trying to get on top of this. And I do feel for staff for having a rush around yeah. and actually compile the information uh, so that we can try to get it read in a timely manner. Definitely, or even trying to make those adjustments to the submission on the fly in the context of a meeting like this. Great to have the chance to workshop, as we did um, on Tuesday, was really, really useful. So thanks for pointing that out, Councillor Halliday. Any other questions from the table? Awesome. Could I have a mover for, for these recommendations? Yep, Councillor Kirby. And did we want to move C2, so provide further direction to staff and agree that the approval of the final submission be delegated to the Mayor in consultation with the Chief Executive prior to submission um, to the Environment Select Committee. I think the comments that Councillor Wilson made earlier on, we might want to just amend the draft submission slightly. Yes, yes. And could we also, that's recommendation A, Steffi, or an amended version of A? Just A? Yeah, yeah, sure. So Councillor Kirby, would you be happy to move A, B and C too? Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, Jocelyn. Yes, I'm happy to move those. Uh, cool, thank you. Do we have a Sorry, seconder? Yes, I'm happy to move those. Okay, and Councillor Wilson seconded. Uh, right of introduction, Councillor Kirby? No, thanks. I'll waive that. Awesome. Any debate? Councillor Provanov. Oh, sorry, Councillor Kirby, could you just press your microphone off? Sorry. Uh, through the chair, um, Chris made the comment, I think it was Chris made the comment, that um, that councillors have the opportunity to provide some more feedback before mm. Monday, mm -hmm. whereas that's not necessarily reflected in what we are now um, agreeing. So you're suggesting we amend C2 to yes. say something <clears throat> like, yes. provide further direction to staff by... Such an, or councillors can provide further yes. direction to staff by the date that we're, by Monday, next Monday. Yeah. Yeah. And you're happy with that as the mover and the seconder? Sorry. Oh, sure, sure. Well, yeah, but you've got, you've got the intent of what we're trying to... I'm... Yeah. I'm... I I'm guess I, I, the mm. concern I have with putting a time frame around it is that uh, that leaves us a whole weekend and potentially giving staff more work on Monday. Um, and that, how does that fit within the time frames that, that exist? Um, I think we need to give our staff, they've worked hard to get to this point, um, and I would be concerned if we create mm. more pressure and more time hours after hours to try and get this work done because we're commenting last minute on Friday, on Monday. Mm. That would be a concern I have with putting a date in there. So just a question for Councillor Bravanov, would you be happy if we're all just of the collective understanding that we are to get our feedback in by then and, and not necessarily having to put it into the recommendations? I don't actually quite understand feedback and by to who and when? Well, 
I wonder if Angela, did you want to give some more <laughs> context as to that, what you mentioned in your email as well? Because it was suggested by staff yeah, to yeah. provide it. And, and so yeah. I, I was just following up on yeah, yeah. on their, you know, I suppose their desire. Yeah. Um, it, and I brought it up so it wasn't... Um, Forgotten about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I guess the process for that would be that you can um, email Chris and I um, with any comments you have, and we can incorporate it and um, and then work it through, yeah, if possible, if possible and work it yeah. through, um, ready for sign off by the end of next week, basically. Okay, so yeah. I have no issue either way, but it's just more I I heard heard the desire from council mm. staff, and I just wanted to to make sure that that loop was closed off. Okay, perfect. Which yeah. I think it is. So maybe we Thank just you. for simplicity. Um, Oh, uh, yeah, Councillor Kirby. Um, I'm happy to reassert my motion. Just leave it as it yeah, is. Yeah, leave it yeah, as it is. Yeah, let's do that. Councillor Wilson, happy to second that still? Uh, yeah, but just, just with a brief comment, that the, um, if I send in something to staff that says, um, and my comment is that basically this is rubbish and you need to completely rewrite this, and here I've given you a rewrite, um, I don't think it would be reasonable to expect that staff would go, yeah, yeah that sounds mm. good, without uh, going back through the whole process again. So I, th if just <coughs> a note of caution here is if we're okay with the substantial document, I actually am, can't see any reason why we wouldn't be, but if, if anybody's really unhappy with it, mm. n now's the time to be um, saying that, yes. because otherwise um, you... You know, any significant departure from this, and you've basically started the process all over again for staff who just won't have time to be putting that together again. Because it's not just about that, you then have to come back and mm -hmm. da, da, right? So if you've got some tweaks or there's a typo or whatever, maybe that's it. But mm -hmm, I wouldn't mm -hmm. be suggesting anyone should be altering anything substantial. Yeah, totally. And as you said, now's the chance to raise that. And we had the opportunity as well on Tuesday to raise such concerns or additions or changes. And also the fact that the Mayor and the Chief Executive will sign that off so they will for sure have you know the integrity of the process in mind that we've all fed into. So I think you can be assured that um, it won't stray far from... Um, yeah, from very close to what's in the document already, the draft submission. Mayor Holfer. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to point out that we are in debate, so it's not a time for questions for staff. Um, so w I'll, I'd like to suggest that if anybody has any burning issues around this submission, that once they've had a chance to read it carefully, um, that those comments come through me so that I can mm. then socialise them if I think it's necessary amongst the rest of the councillors um, at PACE and then forward them on to staff from um, from my office, just so that staff aren't dealing with multiple comments and wondering whether mm. they represent the view of the table. Great that idea. That would be my suggestion. And while I've got the microphone, um, thank you so much to staff. The submission is absolutely excellent. Um, it's really easy to read. Um, I'm presuming it'll be attached um, to today's agenda um, once, once, once it's um, online to cover off those kind of transparency issues that were brought up before. Um, I'll have a conversation about, with staff about whether that's appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers in debate? No? Oh, we've got the recommendation. Yep, and just making sure Councillor Kirby, Councillor Wilson, that's what you of the understanding that you moved and seconded? Yep, perfect. Cool. All those in favour? Against? That's carried. Thanks, Angela. I think you're staying here or no? Oh, Glenn's coming up. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, Glenn, to the table. So our submission on Three Waters legislation. And again, thanks to staff for the um, quick turnaround on some of these amendments. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and through you. Uh, I propose we take the paper as read and noting the comments from the previous paper, uh, the submission has followed the same internal process as the same review process. So happy to take it as read and answer any specific questions you may have. Through you. Uh, just to add to that, um, wanted to ensure that we had highlighted to you that you have previously, um, or council has previously made comment um, on the Three Waters legislation 
and um, as part of that had um, raised to government the question about um, one of our standing orders um, around uh, council's ability or the process we would go through around transferring water assets. Um, so I just wanted to close the loop to say that um, essentially this proposal is now going into implementation and it's a national directive that we're responding to through the submission. So um, uh, essentially I wanted to, to highlight that to you. Do we have any questions on our Three Waters submission? Councillor Halliday. Through you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, it's got a few questions. Well, not so much, qu uh, some questions and just some um, suggestions with regards to adding text or as such to be taken on board, um, but I'll leave it up to um, powers that be to decide whether that's uh, appropriate or not. Um, number 13. Um, I can't give you a page number, I'm afraid. That's uh, on the our context. And this is in the submission, not in the um, not in the agenda as such. What have I done? Um, so I've just made a note here. Um, just, give, just bear with me for a second. Um, I've written down here, being um, democratically accountable, talking to being democratically accountable, but we have made it clear we won't front this for government. So just making sure we're strong enough in our um, in our application that we don't want to be the front face for this um, in government. Um, number 14, um, at the end of that, um, that's the paragraph, um, it's uh, second to last line, it says, um, you'd be carefully managed and consider the fact that council will lose their three waters capability and capacity when staff transition to the new um, SWEs. I don't think it's noted that we also lose our income. Um, as well as um, uh, capacity and staff, as staff, because we actually lose the income from that um, as well, which fundamentally means that um, we aren't funded to respond to this um, as such. Um, we've asked uh, one of the notes I've just made to myself here. We've asked a lot of questions uh, in here. Are we expecting an answer to the submission as such for the questions that we've asked? Uh, we, we've. We've probably asked the questions to highlight the uh, lack of clarity in some of the legislations and hope that will uh, foster debate and further work on the on the bill. Radio, thank you. Uh, number 23. Uh, council and elected members will attract a level of political responsibility for the three waters and remain obligated to look out for communities' interests. Our communities will assume council still have sway and a voice, and perhaps an add-in when this is not the case. Mm. Just clarifying that that is not, you know, we, we just, again, it's, yeah. Uh, look, I looked at number 25. I'm just, I just want a, um, a clarity here. Is there an oversight body as such that allows council to object to the um, WSL or WSE decisions as such. What's our recourse if we're not happy with what's being put in, you know, what, what we've been directed to do as such? I mean, I know that we will have a person, say, on a regional panel or something like that at all, but if we actually have something come down to us that we should, you know, there's, there's all sorts of things here that can go wrong. Uh, with that. Is, uh, do we, uh, what's our process with regards to, um, if you're born, you're born able to swing a stick uh, for some response because um, things are going horribly wrong. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, uh, there is a there is a few layers of input that it, we and our community and the councillors can have. Uh, the Commerce Commission, from a from a Commerce Commission uh, cost and process and fees type point of view, uh, there will be a maybe I'll call it a watchdog for the community, a, a, a person, a helper for our residents and ratepayers that are individually having a, having problems navigating through the system. So that's a provision in the in the Act, uh, through the regional representational group uh, that the uh, council will have some feedback into is one that you've, you've touched on. And then there's also in certain uh, sections of the Act the ability to appeal to the Minister, but that certainly needs some clarity. Correct me if I'm wrong, we've got, there's now, one of the issues that's been that there wasn't regulation over government, well, local council, and that's now been put in place and 
I, I beg forgiveness, I can't remember the name of the, um, the organisation that's been put in place to give that oversight. Um, will they just be giving oversight with regards to ensuring legislation is met, or is that potentially a process, or is that committee or that group um, a... Um, uh, uh, does that offer a pathway for us to um, bring concerns to, a, to a, 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 a different part of the entity, if you like? Um, I'm not sure I completely understand the question, but uh, there is pathways for us to raise our concerns, whether or not they're strong enough, and maybe in our submission we'll get us for some clarity around that. Could I just ask I Councilor Sean as well? Sean has his microphone on. Was that... Was that an answer to this question? Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Kia ora. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. So Tamata Arawai is the regulator that was established uh, probably 12 months, 18 months previously, and they do have a separate, they have a complaints um, uh, requirement delegation within them to pick up. So there's another mechanism. Yes, you can go through them to um, raise com uh, a complaint in terms of performance. Um, so there is also another mechanism through there. Thank you. Um, that's great. Yep, that, that's just good. another one. Um, if I can look down to number 47. Uh, it says WSCs here require to produce stormwater management plans. When producing those plans, WSC must engage with councils. According to the bill, councils must work with the WSC to develop the plan, but clarification is needed how WSs and councils will work to develop these plans. I'm, uh, I'm wondering if we should add in there, um, also who pays for that interface? Um, again, we can't rate for water interaction, so again, this is another one of those scenarios, who pays for it? I can see Glenn... Uh, as writing, we're unable so to rate. I think that's been taken. Uh, right, sorry? Yeah. I was just saying I can see that Glenn's writing that down, so yep, it's taken into account. And then uh, number 54. Uh, I've got down here ties in number 25. Yes, oh, sorry, how is the WSE held to account? Um, legal entity. Okay, so I guess that ties into number 25. Um, Okay, so sorry, I'm just we put together just last night, that's it. And uh, I've got just noted down here, 57, for some clarity. Uh, we think it would be beneficial to clearly map out the LGA content pre and post impact of this bill and taking them. Uh, this should include what goes on with it. I wanted some clarity around that. Um, So we, I, I guess uh, what we're wanting there is just, yeah, we wanted some clarity of, um, uh, we're, we're asking for clarity of, of, I guess, a clearer picture of what's ours and what's theirs. Uh, yeah, it might be helpful to get, to what, get Glenn to respond. What, what we're seeking there is there is a number of changes, uh, implicit, explicit, or unintended, potentially out of the Local Government Act and a, and a raft of other legislation and we would uh, seek a clear, uh, detailed account of what those changes are and how they would impact, because there is a myriad of changes. And, um, sorry, just something just popped into my head then. I'm also just curious, will we be sort of um, creating a, a um, data history, if you like, say for the three, five years pre previous to handover or something along that sort of line, that we can use as a baseline for us to measure um, the impacts of this new entity on, on our local community? Or is it something to maybe consider or look at? Yeah, uh, quality performance monitoring is covered extensively in the legislation. Uh, I think how that works will be will be interesting. Yeah, I just it'd be nice to have something to compare that to. You know, we've got some very good response times as just shown in our um, report for the round track that quarterly report sums as such. We've got very good response times, and if that diminishes, will we be tracking that at all, or is that something that um, the entities themselves will track? Uh, the short vision is the entities themselves will be tracking that. Great. Thank you, Glenn. Thanks, Councillor Halliday. Councillor Cooper. Uh, through the Chair, we, I, I may have missed it. When is uh, the submissions close on this um, 
select committee. Uh, the submissions close in about 10 days time, either the 17th or 19th of, um, of this month, 17th. I was just wondering um, whether they'll extend that with the flip-flops and um, what do you call it, um, changing of the lot of government-led projects and the Prime Minister signalled there'll be substantial changes to the Three Waters project in the next two weeks, whether a lot of this will actually even be appropriate post, is the end indication that they will push uh, that date out? We've had no indication as yet that the date we've pushed out, we're simply responding to the information we have in the select committee process and time frame. Would it be appropriate to ask for extension? Or would that be inappropriate? Uh, if if council was in mind that they want further work on their submission, uh, that that's a, a council decision. Yeah. Sorry. Um, just just that may substantially change post. Through you, um, uh, there may be an opportunity, um, Councillor Cooper, to inform the change that might be proposed. Um, uh, the new minister for local government is considering um, options for the way forward. And, and it may be that the submissions that go in um, may be taken into account through that process. Um, whereas if there was an extension, it would conceivably miss that time frame. Uh, it is possible to, to test that, but I thought I'd put that on the table. Councillor Wilson. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, a number of my questions have already been asked, but I've got a couple of others. The, um, the better off funding, uh, of which we've just been recently very publicly celebrating uh, 5.26 million, um, and which is part of the 21 million that is being committed to us. So the, um, the question is, do in, in our submission, are we protecting that at all? So is there any likelihood that government says three waters means we're not going to get re-elected as government, so let's just put the whole thing on hold. How does that come to the $2 billion for the better off funding, and how secure is, is that? Because we're making, we've been making commitments based on that um, already, and probably going to make a whole lot more <laughs> with another fifteen million coming down the pipe. So that was that was one of the questions. Um, or will uh, will anybody be asking for their money back? So that's that's the that's the first question. And the second one uh, you might want to make a note is that does our submission because I've only read one. Uh, well, that's not true. I've read a couple of others, but there's. Uh, I mean, I haven't read all of the submissions that are that are going around. I haven't read any of the drafts that are going around from other councils. How, how, you guys probably have. How, how closely does our submission reflect that generally within local government? Or are we a vast departure? Are we radical standouts? Uh, in in order of your questions, yeah. uh, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, our submission replies or uh, addresses the two bills that are at the uh, select committee table or going to be at the select committee table. Uh, the decision, the tranche of funding was dealt with previous policy, uh, previous submissions, uh, so we don't address the specifics of better funding in the submission. Uh, the second point, our submission is largely based on uh, local government New Zealand feedback that they had got from councils uh, around New Zealand, of which we tailored, tailored it for our uh, situation. Uh, my sense is that uh, by and large, uh, local government have the same uh, issues and views, but they're tailored for each of their communities and, uh, and uh, councils. But yeah, I think broadly in line. Sorry, I think Councillor Wilson has another question if we could get him bumped up the list. Just so we don't have to reconfigure. 
Okay, thank you. There we go. Um, no, it's not another question. It's the same one. They um, just didn't get answered. I, I'm, um, I understand that's not part of the submission. This is in regards to the funding. So that's not part of the submission, but just um, I think it's relevant, and maybe it should be part of the, the depending on what the answer is, uh, perhaps it should be part of the <laughs> submission because a lot of councils, including ours, will have made substantial commitments based on that funding. And so the question is, is this, you know, is that funding in any way under threat? Are you guys aware of, of that? From my understanding, we put together a proposal for tranche one, which has now been obviously sent our way, which is great. Mm. But for tranche two, we haven't put together any form of a proposal as to how that would be used. So I don't think we've made any any concrete commitments? Thanks, Councillor Wilson. Um, through you, Madam Chair, and Sean might add to this. You're, you're spot on. We've made no further commitments, and we're really at the whim of central government. So at the moment, we have better off funding that has been allocated, uh, and we've signed up to that. The no worse off funding, which is the next tranche, mm. is yet to be discussed. Was that your questions, Councillor Wilson? Yeah. <laughs> Happy to leave it there. Cool. Okay, thank you. Community Board Member Jackie Elliott. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to um, ask questions of, of two parts <coughs> of this. Firstly, um, Chris, um, thank you for your comments regarding the Standing Order 9.16 on page 32 of the Standing Orders. I wonder whether or not given that we, this is, our standing orders are being overridden, but whether or not process would it take that it's appropriate for council to actually revoke one of the parts of the standing order? And that is part F, which says that any departure from a non-profit charging regime for council's water supply system will require a 75% majority of members present and voting, and that all decisions under A to F will require a referendum to have taken place to provide input into a decision before that decision is made. I'm wondering whether or not that part of it should be revoked formally by the council. I might pass to Darren on this one. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Madam Chair. Good question. Um, so, so, so the references that, that you're making are also prophesied in the Local Government Act. Uh, and so the expectation of certainly all councils will be when central government uh, implements three waters, if that is the path that we travel, there will be a number of pieces of legislation that will be repealed. And I would consider that would be the appropriate path to take, rather than as a, as a council uh, taking our own, probably our own steps in leading. Let's be a follower uh, on, on this occasion as we look at national direction. Thank you, Mr. CE. And my second question, there has been a lot of comment in the last two agenda items about the very tight um, central government timeframes for submissions. And I'm wondering if it's time now that we have the opportunity with a new local government minister for Council to promote a remit to LGNZ. Uh, we, 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 we're well within the time frame to be considering this, and the remit would be for an extension of um, all time frames to be written into their statutory obligations for the submissions. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point, and I think that's been hopefully noted down by um, people that it needs to be and, and on, on our radar too, so thanks. Community Board Member Elliot for raising that. Did you have any other questions? Uh, no, no, thank you. Uh, Mayor Pulbra. I'm happy to progress that through Zone 4. Um, that, that's a great okay. suggestion. Um, so I've got a, ju just one, just a small question. So in the natural and built environment submission, it says, um, in addition to the above high level analysis, please find attached to comprehensive technical commentary. Um, is there um, a detailed technical commentary accompanying this submission as well? Uh, no, no, there's not no. currently. Okay. 
And I was just going to suggest that just at the end of the submission that we copy and paste the one from the natural and built environments, just, you know, once again, thanks for the opportunity and we want to speak to the submission, etc. just to close it off. But um, fantastic submission, thanks. Thank you, Councillor Pravanov. Uh, thank you, through um, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Glenn, for um, this very good um, submission and the staff um, uh, and the other staff who have um, helped get this to this position. So I've got a question. Um, it's around, so within the submission, Roding's mentioned a couple of times, and I suppose um, one of the question, the question I have is about how roading and the fact that there are potentially pipes underneath it which potentially could go to three waters, how all that works. And so there's a number of points in here that relate to um, liability, who pays, rates, et cetera, et cetera. So just um, clarification about how all that gels together would be appreciated. Thank you. Uh, the the short answer to an incredibly complex question and, and uh, problem is that the transport corridor, and we call the transport corridor from uh, private boundary to the middle of the road across to the other private boundary on the other side of the road, anything within the transport corridor relating to stormwater assets will stay with the council where the stormwater is transport uh, orientated stormwater. So road, road water, Transport water uh, is dealt with by transport activity and remains with council. Uh, the sumps and the infrastructure that drain the road will stay with council and the leads that take that water away will stay with council. The stormwater water and wastewater pipes that just happen to travel underneath the transport corridor will go to the new entity. And there is a lot of complexity that, that we as as New Zealand, we as asset managers need need to work through, but that's that's the headline. Thank you for that. Um, so I suppose um, in terms of um, addressing some of those matters and the complexity and about how we are going to be impacted by that, whether some of the wording could be maybe made a bit stronger. So I, I think there's um, paragraph 43, 54, 59 and 60 that all relate to that. Uh, certainly there's a lot of work going on within the, within the industry, working group specialist uh, groups that are dealing with the, the issue you raised. But if we can uh, strengthen up some of the wording, certainly we'll undertake to do that. Thank you. Any further questions on the report in front of us? Mayor Holbrook. I'm happy to move the recommendations and I have an additional recommendation in light of one of the questions that was asked. What was that additional recommendation? I've Just so given it can... to staff. Oh, you've hopefully perfect. we'll have it on the screen in a minute. And did you want to move C2, C2. as well? Yeah. Cool. Maybe the seconder. Just once we see that additional... I was just in, in response to Councillor Cooper's um, comment and I think it's an appropriate thing to highlight mm. at this point that there is that uncertainty that exists currently, probably more around this piece of legislation than the previous mm. one. Yeah, so. yeah, for sure. <laughs> so do we have a do we have a seconder for that package there of recommendations? So I'll just read out the additional one. Yeah. Notes that the submission is responding to current government policy and timeframes and may need review if there are changes to those. Councillor Wilson, would you like to second? Yeah, cool. And right of introduction? I think I've already thanked staff for this <laughs> excellent submission. Um, aside from that, um, yeah, we'll just wait and see what happens in this space. What I like about both of these submissions is they provide that deep context around the challenges that we're facing with these multiple reforms and the impost that has on our, us as an organisation and our capacity um, to deal with them and also the cost to us in terms of dealing with them. So um, not mm -hmm. only are they very 
good submissions in terms of the detail of the legislation, but also that broader context, I think, is very well communicated mm. and and accurately represents what what we have communicated with staff through our briefings and workshops, which have been very well run and enabled us to have quite um, quite a strong um, input into these submissions under tight time frames. So mm. huge thanks to staff and to other councillors as well for engaging in those and our community board members as well. Yeah, couldn't agree more. And also having our iwi partners involved in that process has been invaluable too. And um, yeah, just, just the whole the whole process has been great and the sentiment by, by all of us, from all of us, has been captured extremely well and with lots of agility. So thank you so much. Councillor Halliday. <coughs> Thank you, three, uh, you, Madam Chair. I agree with everything that's been said. I just wanted to add, you know, one of the notes I made to myself here is a lot of the stuff seems to be focused on growth, 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 growth. And that sort of scenario, I appreciate that a lot of it's infrastructure and, and scenario, but we, I think we just need to keep in the back of our mind you know, that, that um, the well-beings of our community mm -hmm. and our environment um, are just as important to me. And I think we've got to be a little bit, a little bit careful that um, we don't get too, well, we, although there's a need to be caught up in the um, intricacies of all this. and Let's face it, just getting more and more complex the closer we're getting to execution uh, with regards to that. But, um, but and I guess there's two sides to that as well. There's the well-being of our environment and our community, um, but also the well-being of our staff uh, who are responding to this sort of thing, and councillors, and everyone that's involved in these projects mm -hmm. as well. Um, I don't know what the um, way to manage that is, but hopefully our new Prime Minister uh, will um, start putting a bit of a knife through some of the stuff and slowing it down so that that can be addressed in a proper manner so that we aren't putting things in place that have to be fixed on the run again, like just as, as has been the process of the RMA since it was put in right back at the beginning. Just my 10 cents worth. Don't see any other lights around the table? Yeah, kia ora, go for it. Kia ora, everybody. Um, from the Te Atiawa perspective or the iwi perspective uh, my um we have a taiao unit in our under our um in our charitable trust or in our one of our entities and um, they've asked me to just put these three points <coughs> across to you all pertaining to the three waters and the first one is that our our existing partnership arrangements relevant 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 to the three waters are protected and transferred to the new entity Second one is that we are able to maintain our Tinoranga Tiratanga over the water. And the last one is the existing funding arrangements protected and transferred to the new entity. We, these are just the, the bold points that were put on the um, computer this morning that I had to bring to this meeting. We have the draft of how we've come to this and um, that will be made available to everyone and you guys once I've arranged that. Kia ora, Chris, thank you. And, and is Te Atiaoki Whakarungutai making a submission? Do you know into this, into uh, this look, process? I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm just getting my head around this. Yeah, all good. You know, and um, this is what I had to do, so I've done what I've had You've to done do. You've done it, well done. <laughs> and, um, I, I can't answer that question once I get back to work. Yeah, all good, all good. But, um, yeah, but, um, thank you. Thanks for I bringing that to it, the table. But it is... Um, <laughs> Please forgive me if I sound like I'm in the wrong place, but um, I don't mean to be. Not but at all. We've all got your back for sure. Okay. Like any support that you need, just yeah, always sing out. Um, thank you. Kia ora, Chris. Thank Much you. Much appreciated. If you could just press your your oh, red button sorry. again, so your mic turns off. Awesome. All good. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Yeah, just wanted to make a very uh, quick comment about the um, the timelines around these things. I mean. It, it's not unprecedented, the, the rate of change in government policy. <coughs> Anyone who survived the 1980s can tell you what was happening then. Um, and, in, and in order to, for any entities to respond and respond in a meaningful way in a short time period is like, so the pressure is enormous. And so, um, you know, I promised myself I wasn't going to do this, but actually, um, I do think the staff have done a good job um, in in this regard. That there are huge pressures to produce something that's meaningful, right, in a very very short period of time. I think it's just helpful if we are all politically aware of that. 
um, that you don't, yeah, you, once upon a time you had a lot longer to digest information, to reform it, to go back to your community, consult with communities, and kind of go all those processes, right? Um, this current legislative program, we don't have that luxury. And, and, it, and I think if that gets reflected somewhere, one of the things that, that, that we don't, aren't able to do is go back to the community and, and consult with these things. So we're using the best minds at the table um, and in the rooms upstairs. So just, that's just a comment around that. Thank you, Mayor Holbrook. I'll wait for my right of reply. Oh, I'll, I'll turn it Cool, on. no worries. Councillor Kirby. Um, we're in debate, is that an understanding? Yep, correct. Um, I take what I hear from Te Atiawa through Chris um, and the unknown about whether they're submitting something. And I guess my, um, my comment in this is, do we need to reflect uh, that view from our iwi partnership in our submission to cover and support whatever if Te Atiawa goes down that road um, of submitting or not submitting, that we're backing their submission through our submission. I, I think that would reflect partnership quite well. Um, and also, I think it also uh, reasserts the importance of what Te Atiawa is saying in regards to our three waters, um, which I don't see that's covered in here at this stage. Maybe that is a point of miss that we're missing in that um, in our submission. Maybe a reference to that those three points that uh, Chris has tabled today. I think, yeah, Mayor Holber will, res will respond to that as the mover of this motion on the table. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to suggest <laughs> in my right of reply. So add. I'm happy to add another section to this with the agreement of the table that we um, add a, a, a separate section that says... Um, we note um, the, broad, the broad or main points um, that our that our that our Manapenua partners Te Atiawaki Whakarongatai have communicated to us, and then just list those um, points down. So I wonder about a process going through that. If maybe they could be emailed through to me, and just so that all the councillors can have a look and. Mm. Um, just by exception, if anybody doesn't think they should be included, then let me know, and then I'll forward them, forward them to staff. If that would be an appropriate way to deal with that. Yeah, yeah that makes a lot of sense. As one of the people who will have that final sign off on the submission to make those amendments to it. So yeah, thanks, Chris. Kim, um, kia ora. Yeah, a similar conversations between everyone that's just spoken um, during the workshop process. Um, I brought up about and hats off to the staff because it's amazing what you've done. It's awesome. But the one thing I did raise is that as an UWI member sitting here and you're going into those workshops, because the submission does not have that Te Ao Māori view within it, um, already I can't be confident that it's got that Te Ao Māori lens. And so instead of being someone who's tweaking something, I am someone who's trying to put all our thoughts into that submission at that one workshop with one person. Um, it's not a criticism because I know we are working with council staff, we've got our staff working with council staff really well um, to change up that process, so that's fine. Um, but yeah, so my thought is I have read submissions um, from in the art space um, and so people are putting in submissions, but exactly what you said is that if we're going to present a carpet submission, then we have different people who are submitting and we have, you know, so council and mana whenua are, are the two biggies. So we need to support each other's submissions. So including something like that, a statement saying, um, you know, Te we have a submission and we support theirs, um, and vice versa, would only enrich the submission. Uh, I don't know about this submission because of the time frames, and I know there's been talk about submissions from our end, um, but in future going forward, I think that would just really strengthen both and then we have a bigger audience to take forward with a bigger voice, is, is my thinking. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, no, thanks for raising that, Kim. It would be great if it became kind of like a practice that, yeah, that within the submission process, that, um, that that's always just always there. So I think that's been 
been heard and yeah, and noted, so thanks for raising it. Councillor Cooper. Uh, yeah, just in response to, uh, I'm a bit of an outlaw on this possibly. So uh, I think the uh, iwi partners, if they're submitting um, from the uh, from uh, iwi, they choose to submit their own submission. I think the council should um, support their right to submit the submission, but we may not necessarily agree with their submission, and we don't have to agree with their decision. They've got we should be giving them the autonomy to feel free to speak freely in their submission, without us as a council being bound to agree or disagree with it. It's not for us to disagree or disagree with a, a partner's submission. I th but we should support their right to um, to submit and not necessarily feel bound to, to agree or s agree with what they are submitting because they may be in conflict with some values. I think and now we... That, that's tanga Tino Tanga. Uh, excuse my yeah. pronunciation, yeah. but that is, is that not the essence of it? I think now we're maybe getting into a discussion about process into the future in terms of submissions, but in terms of this specific one, um, being able to just include those specific points made by Te Atiaoki um, and maybe that's a conversation that we, yeah, we continue to have, but thanks for putting your perspective into the mix, Councillor Cooper. I was responding to someone else's perspective. And Kim. Yeah, kia ora, I agree. I absolutely agree. Um, but there are things that we are, are aligned on. So I think where we are mm. aligned, we should go in full force together. There's obviously going to be a different perspective, but I absolutely agree. We don't want to be... I don't agree with that, so I don't want to put in a submission that I do. But where we mm. are aligned, I think we have a better weight if we go together. That's all. Councillor Pravano. Yes, so thank you. So as being the previous chair of the Waikai Community Board, um, we've gone down this line quite regularly where community groups have provided their submission to us um, before the closing date, and then we have endorsed their submissions in principle, and I hear exactly what you're saying, Kim, um, and I think it actually builds strength and synergies um, in many um, different ways. Thanks, Councillor Pravan of Councillor Halliday. At your discretion, Madam Chair, because I've already spoken once, but I just want to just comment briefly, on... Just briefly, yeah. Yeah, um, I fully endorse what's just been said with regards to our relationship with AUB partners, but I'd like to be thinking that we're at the start. Well, we'll I, I should rephrase it. We're not at the start. We're on an ongoing journey, uh, and uh, fantastic having you at the table, um, but I would like us to see us doing some workshops where we're working together and we're working on our relationship. We're being open and talking about our relationship uh, so that um, in, in the future that we are... Uh, united in how we are presenting, we might have conflicting views um, on things, but we're on the same page and we're informed of each other's processes. I'll be very interested in reading your submission um, and, and to get an understanding of Atiawa's point of view, as with all three iwi in, in this space as well. But it'll be really nice to be having some workshops perhaps programmed in for us to have open and frank conversations with our partners uh, with regards to how this all works moving forward, what is working, what isn't working, and um, yeah, that would be appreciated. Thanks for that, yeah, suggestion and, and comment, Councillor Halliday. I think I can see Janice taking some notes over there as well, so um, so thanks for that. Councillor Coe. Uh, yeah, just further to that point, um, and this is taking, a, taking a things slightly off track, but I think uh, in terms of the iwi input representation and in including to our Māori and, and what we do, there is a uh, need, in my view, for some guiding principles around that uh, in terms of, you know, uh, what, what does consultation mean, what does representation mean? Because there are instances where uh, perhaps um, what well, there's a whole spectrum in terms of, you know, what consultation means and, and where council has the right to um, overrule any input from our iwi representation, for example, or where we might, on the other hand, defer to our iwi representatives for um, decisions in certain areas. So I think there is a spectrum of decision making and it would be really useful, I think, to have uh, some guiding principles around how that all works uh, going forward and that perhaps be considered as part of the review of our iwi representation. Hmm. 
Yeah, some other, some, some good comments. Thank you, Councillor Coe. I think Mayor Holborough would like to speak briefly, right of reply. Right of reply. Right of reply. Yep. <laughs> we've got, we've got a new Fantastic. Hand. So we've, we've drifted into a broad conversation around our iwi engagement, but it's a good opportunity for that because this has been a particular kind of um, bugbear is that we, we haven't had that opportunity due to timeframes and constraints to make sure that we, we're aligned and that, that we're um, make, ensuring as far as possible that we have input into our submissions and that we're not at, count, at cross purposes. Usually I have to say we are in alignment, but um, in this case with, with Three Waters being such a, a huge kind of change for us in terms of Tino Rangatiratanga, um, I think it's appropriate that in my view, that if we agree with those broad principles that were shared with us today, that we include them in our submission, I think that would be really powerful. So um, we'll get those and we'll see if we agree with them. Um, if we don't, we'll just leave our submission as it is. But I think if we do agree with those, those thoughts that were shared with us today, then um, I think it would be wonderful to include them. In terms of that um, broader issue around how we work with our uh, iwi partners, there's probably an opportunity to have a conversation around that um, as we renew our memorandum of partnership, which does provide us with those more high level principles. But um, I think what I'm hearing is that we need to um, have a little bit of think more thinking about how they feed down into um, operationally how we, um, how we engage with, with each other. So yeah, I've heard that and so have our staff and um, yeah, we'll follow that up. But, um, yeah, in terms of the submission, I don't think we need an extra recommendation um, in terms of that extra part because that can be covered under C option two um, when it's signed off by the chief executive and myself. Thank you, Mayor Holborough. So that was moved by, oh, that was a while ago now, moved by Councillor Kirby, seconded by, no, moved by, yeah, seconded by Councillor Wilson. There we go. All those in favour, say aye. aye. All those against, carried. Awesome. I think we'll take a quick 10-minute break. So back in at 10 past 11. Thank you. Totally. Because it's all good and well to say. Oh, you can come to the front. Oh.